Okay, so I was asked the question, what about those people who are utterly devoted to spiritual work and to God or the infinite or enlightenment, but have not had a mystical experience? And if I can speak to that. Well, you know, here's my view, even though um, it sounds quite dualistic, it's taking the thing karma. So um, I'd say many people, especially people with spiritual intensity, for what I know with Hawkins' research, have had prior past lifetimes of spiritual dedication um, and have been quite devoted uh, or may even been on the Buddhist part. I think a lot of people have been on the, have had a previous lifetime of Buddhism or could be Christian, had a Christian mystic saint as their, um, as their, um, you know, I forgot, I don't know what you called them, the head of the order, like St. Francis, uh, you know, St. Francis who says it's in dying when he's born to eternal life. What you're looking for is where you're looking from. He was a Christian saint. But if you were with in his presence, and when he's saying to you, it's in dying to his, to his um, uh, trainee, I think they're monks, aren't they? I'm not an expert in Christianity. As St. Francis says, you know, it's in dying, you're born to eternal life. And uh, what you're looking for, students, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. Now, he's in the presence, you know, he's in that infinite presence, and he's a Christian. So if he's saying to students, I mean, I'm sure some of them would have probably recognized, ah, yes, I am that. Uh, that that thing behind my thoughts and my body, that is what I am. How did I think I was my thoughts and my body? So he's a, he's, that's a Christian mystic. Now, um, you know, like, uh, uh, and so, um, so anyway, why am I saying that? Because people would have had past lifetimes, even in Christianity or any religion, where they might have had a mystic or enlightened teacher, um, you know, who would speak uh, to them uh, and the students, and uh, they may have experienced. And actually, I'm not talking on the question. The question is, what if you've not had an experience of that? So what if you were not lucky, but there was something in you that wanted to give absolute devotion, but you've never experienced the infinite? Um, I think that's very, very good. I mean, a lot of these spiritual orders, whether it's Christian or Buddhist or whatever it is, you know, they do have a, you know, like, I think, you know, what I've heard is like, even to join a monastery, a Christian monastery, shall we say, or a Buddhist monastery, it's required. Are you willing to sacrifice a lot to join the order, to join the monastery, the Buddhist, the Christian monastery? Are you willing to give that up? Are you willing to give this up? Are you willing to give all of those things? Then you can join us in spiritual devotion and be intense, be willing to sacrifice all those things your ego wants, Christian or Buddhist or whatever. Hindu, I'm sure, is the same. And um, so you have to sacrifice everything to get that higher order of spiritual. So you, you develop spiritual muscle of intensity to to God, to Buddhahood, to whatever it is, to clearing your karma for enlightenment. And um, and then you come back this lifetime, uh, but you've got like a, there's a spiritual intensity, even though you're born, a spiritual intensity for spiritual discovery and intense spiritual devotion and work. and. Um, uh, so in the Rig Vita, it says all those who call on God, you know, God will answer. Whatever doesn't matter what name you use for it. It's like you're devoted. You're devoted to, to divinity, not to a person, place or situation. And you call like divinity. I, I don't know, but I'm 100% devoted to you. And I will spend my life in devotion to you to get to know you, uh, whether you call it God, Buddhahood, the infinite. And that devotion will then mean that when there's that, that devotion for that, and you don't even haven't had a mystical experience yet, then it's like divinity will bring in my, I'm sure, yeah, I mean, in my experience as well, when you're devoted to that, the teacher will come. Eventually, the right teacher will come that will take you there. Uh, because you're calling on divinity, of course, divinity is going to organize the right teacher for you. Well, I mean, absolutely. Um, so uh, it might take a while of devotion and your ego may take you down to the wrong teachers and the wrong spiritual groups because you're you haven't got uh, you're not yet done enough um, clearing so that uh, you know so and you have to do a bit of clearing before you get the right teacher it seems but you'll get there so th those who devote themselves to God you know be still uh, uh, and know I am God or I like St. Francis, you're, you know, um, 
I forget what he said now. I said it a few minutes ago. And um, yeah, in dying, one is born to eternal life. Um, or you can't escape this world, but, uh, you know, and if you're holding on to any attachment, you know. So uh, devotion. So when you're devoted, uh, even if you've not had it, if you're devoted to Buddhist teacher and you seek enlightenment, if you're devoted uh, to uh, in Christianity, completely devoted to giving your life in service to God and to um and you know hopefully you'll be directed you know be still and know that I'm God uh, or or recognize Saint Francis and and do a bit of reading on Saint Francis and try and get an understanding what has to die uh, you know it's in dying one is born to eternal life uh, I think someone's okay oh, I can deal with that um so so you um you know the right teachers and, and the infinite will come just be devoted to that even if you've not experienced it and uh, the right teacher situations and things will eventually come to you uh, you may be led astray because your ego is still quite um, thorough but your devotion will, will will take you to uh, to the end <clears throat>